Hello everybody, this is the Android Gamer, and today I'm doing something a little different. I sort of said a little bit of it on the video I did a couple weeks ago, where I was saying, uh, giving an update on my channel and what I'm trying to do with it and all this stuff. And yeah, so this is the project I wanted to work on. So everyone at the end of the year talks about, goes over the channel and all that, and as much as I could do that, I wanted to... I haven't really done enough my channel to warrant doing it, even though I have grown a little bit in the year, so I'm very happy about that, I'm very blessed about that. But I want to do something a little bit unique. Um, so I've seen where a lot of people have been doing, you know, top games and all that, and I'm planning to do that in the whole series of this, is top games. Um, but instead of just doing random topics or random games, I thought I would do the top games of game consoles or systems that I've had in my lifetime on this earth where I've played games on this. So the first one I've ever had and remember very little growing up is the Texas Instruments. So these are the top 10 games that I've played on Texas Instrument. And I should say there is some preference as well as the fact that these might not be the best games that are on these platforms I'll be displaying in this series, but they're the games that I've played a lot on these consoles or these systems and enjoyed had a lot of player build enjoyment out of it. So starting off is number 10. So the first one I have is The Attack. And it's a fairly simple game. Most games on Texas Instruments were, were fairly simple because it came out in the 1980s. It was 1981 when it first came out. And attack all it is that you're a little ship running around shooting the the aliens and seeds that they leave that will grow more of them. And there's little boxes that count down and as they count down they'll grow either more seeds or actually grow uh, the little ends. As you see here this is a screenshot of one of the gameplays and I enjoyed it a lot. I, well, I shouldn't say I enjoyed it a lot. I mean honestly it's at the bottom of the list but I Always seem to come back to it every once in a while and play it. I wasn't really good, that good at it. I mean, I got past some of the worlds, but yeah, in the end, it was a fairly interesting game. So I decided to include it in the list here. So next one is number nine. Number nine is Sherman. And I tried to figure out, I tried to look on the internet to figure out what type of game this is. And really all it is is you try to find a bunch of keys and try to escape. Now the only unique thing about this game, which is surprising way back in the 80s, is the fact that the game constantly changes. The The map is never the same. It, it's always changing, always forming, always looking different, and the keys are also never in the same place. They're always randomly generated. So it's always tried difficult and try interesting to find everything and try to pass through and each room is called a different color or something like that and fairly unique and each uh, monster in the rooms does different things and so on. <clears throat> so, number eight. Hangman. Uh, <laughs> it was fun and it's interesting because everyone knows Hangman. I mean, the paper game, you sit down, draw on it and you choose a name and then, or choose a word or whatever, and people had to try to figure it out. <clears throat> in text instruments version, they have the same thing where you have a word that's either automatically generated, or you can have it that you can create your own words and own sort of game. So the playability is goes a lot further. That's not just based on what the computer generates. Is if you know a bunch of words yourself, you can play with your friends and try to figure out if you can stump them or not with the words you give them. Number seven is Parasac. Um, well, the easiest way is that it's a space exploring game, as you know, as you've seen in the um, arcades, where you're flying around. Each level has different spaceships and all that, and you go through and shoot them and gain points. <clears throat> Sometimes they get harder and harder, and they come different directions at you. The worst possible thing I had, even though. I, it, did have fun time playing it is this part here where you're having to try to refuel the ship. I never been able to get to it. Like 
<laughs> the size of the spray of the ship and the size of trying to get inside in there, it's impossible, and you'd have to have a very pre precise controller to be able to do it. I never was able to. I was always died, so I didn't really get too far with it. But So it was a fun little game to play. Number six. <clears throat> Wildcats. So this was actually one... There was one part of the unique thing with the text instruments that not only did it have console games, that it also allowed you to do cassette tapes. And a lot of people was like, what? <laughs> Cassettes? Yes, you could play cassette tapes. And this is one of the games that we had that you, that you did cassette tape. So what it is is that you're pretty much an oral baron or oral um, exploration team, and you're looking around for your oil so you're going through trying to find different things so there's a big huge map and you have like so many weeks to try to find oil and whoever has the most at the end of the week's wins it's real fun it's interesting my family enjoyed doing it and we always try to figure it out at the end because it shows you like w whichever location you choose it chooses a color and a lot of times they're sometimes generated an image so we sit there trying to figure out at the end of the weeks what the image is so it's, it's really interesting <clears throat> Number five, Amazing, the Great Cat and Mouse Game, which is pretty much what it is, because you are either a single or a pair of mice if you wanted to play with two-player, and you have to try to go through a maze, and there's various different ways you do it. You can have cheese, you can have the maze hidden, not hidden, mouse holes, as you can see here, and the cats, and... You can have various degrees of levels for cats where they go from very slow and dumb to extremely lightning fast and smart and what's called pouncing will or will jump around on the maze. So if it's pouncing and lightning fast, it's like just everywhere. It's constant mayhem. It's a lot of fun and really enjoyable. Number four is Munchman. So this is one of two games I have in the top 10 that I've played that even though they have some of the or they have the original games of Pac-Man and the one I'll have later they TI or Texas Instruments also came out its own, its own version and one which was to match Pac-Man's Munchman. The difference between these two is whereas Pac-Man the I think the maze slowly starts to disintegrate itself until the point where it's just a bunch of pixels. You don't see the the maze at all in small muscle memory. With Munchman, with each passing level, the world gets lighter, or the maps gets lighter and lighter and lighter to the point where it's just completely white. And again, you have to do muscle memory to remember where everything is. And I enjoy playing it and never really got a chance to beat it, but I know I got very high level into it, and I got to a point where I was able to do the map real well to a point of muscle memory, but it was really fun and really enjoyable. <clears throat> Number three, getting to the top three now. So, this is the second game that was part of Text Instruments' a spoofing of games. So, obviously, the Space Invaders, this is TI Invaders, which is the exact same thing, where you are. <coughs> single sh cannon shooting up against a bunch of enemies and as you shoot more and more they get faster and faster and faster there's a ship that flies by if you shoot you get more money and you have of course three lives and as you get higher in levels I believe you do get more um, but uh, again they get same as regular space invaders they get lower and lower and lower and start getting close to you so where you could die and yeah, it was really fun, really enjoyable, um, great game. I enjoyed playing it on and off, and just very entertaining all all in all. <clears throat> Number two is Blastoid. This is a very fun game, enjoyable playing against someone else or even trying to beat your high score. So all it is is that you had two modes. There's one where it's mines and one where it's uh, just obstacles. And it's fun when you shoot against someone and you 
pretty much shoot against or shoot at them across the whole map or shoot a b mine against them and blow them up and just beat them in the end. It was very entertaining. I had fun playing with my family and my brother and just fun playing back and forth with this. And number one on my list that I enjoyed, that our family enjoyed a lot, was Tunnels of Doom. It was a sort of RPG, RPG style game, but it's also somewhat first person when you're walking through the corridors, where it has two sort of games within it. They have the main game, which was Tunnels of Doom, which is uh, King, the quest for the quest for the king where the monsters have captured the king and you have to find him and also his orb of power and get everyone back before the before the monsters kill you and kill the king and also with that based on how many levels you have you can have from 1 to 10 and you have so many steps that you have to find the king and his uh, orb of power before they either kill the king or destroy the Orb of Power of both, and it was very entertaining and enjoyable a lot. There's, you have different modes, you have like vaults you have to go through, and if you mess up so many times, you die. They have fountains that might be good, might be bad. They had a bunch of different levels, and very enjoyable. You had the main three trope uh, race, or classes where you have a fighter, a wizard and a rogue or a thief, and as I said, you go through and there's a bunch. There's a whole bunch of different uh, monsters, even though the sprites for them might be recycled and reused and all that. But it was a very enjoyable game. We enjoyed it. We'd always, it was always our go-to when we wanted to play as a family. That we could go down, sit down, and play the game, and it was just enjoyable. And another one where it was. This one's different because it was a con er, cartridge that you put into the computer and also a tape where you had to play the game off the tape. But anyways, yeah, so that is my top 10 games for a Texas Instrument. I hope you enjoy this. I have, I believe, four other videos I'm going to be doing in this series. And if you like this, please like and make a comment and just let me know what games if you remember playing Texas Instrument, what games were your favorites? All right, this is Android Gamer, Layer Days, and happy gaming!